Hello again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is an EAP Society Quick Take Tuesday, where we take a quick take look at a single release or a story or something that's a little too short for our main channel content. And today we are looking at Double Trouble in glorious Blu-ray. Twice as much as anybody else. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, the really cool thing about this, you know, Double Trouble and Spin Out kind of came out not too far apart from each other. And Correct. Uh, what's really nice is... Those are especially important for Elvis fans because not only are they not available on Blu-ray or 1080p until now, they were not available on digital 1080p either. They were only available in standard definition. So to have them in 1080p in a higher resolution in any format sure. is huge. Yeah, Um these look really nice, too. We watched uh, a considerable amount of Double Trouble before making this. And uh, even though uh, those of you who have watched our movie episode know that I'm not a fan of the film, I will say it looks better than it ever has before. Yeah. The image quality has improved so much, you can almost see life behind Elvis's eyes. <laughs> Oh, man. But yeah, so we're going to give you a, a quick little unboxing here, and we'll do this so I can see even better. I love that they're using basically the poster. Uh, that's going, of course, you yeah, get... Yeah, it's the poster with the Warner Archive thing attached and the extra credits taken off. Yep. And the back. And there's where the credits go. Yep. Elvis finds love, larceny, and fun on the double. <laughs> Very nice. And I, I do like that. You know what? And the other thing that I like is the uh, the the font. The movie poster font is used on the spine. That is a consistent thing with Warner Brothers uh, archive Blu-rays, and it looks phenomenal. I yeah. love it. And what's especially nice about it is, like, um, for a while, there are a fair number of Blu-rays that have the same font, the same... Uh, it's like black with like white lettering and it's block lettering. It's fine and all, but trying to find a specific movie just on like quick sight. Yeah. Cause is, like that, that's it, how I find stuff is I recognize what it's supposed to look like. And I'm mm, this one, this you know? one. Yep. Yep. And that helps a, a lot. It does. Yeah. So now we're going to show you the immaculate Blu-ray jewel case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. And there's the disc. A nice looking disc. That's very cool. Got the Turner Entertainment logo, the Warner Brothers logo, and the Blu-ray logo. Yep. So very nice. And like I said, the you know, this looks it, the picture quality. Well, like John said, I should say, the picture quality was really good. Uh, this is by far the best that these have looked. Can I give this my pitch read? I'm sure. Read the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just in case anybody doesn't know what uh, Double Trouble's about. When crooner Guy Lambert wraps his London show and travels to Brussels, two beauties secretly follow. One, Annette Day, is a love-struck heiress. The other, Yvonne Romaine, an enig enigmatic temptress. And they could be too, too much for the attached Guy. Comedy, mystery, and mayhem combine when Elvis Presley plays Guy in Double Trouble. A romp involving stolen gems, trench-coated detectives. That is, oh, oh. Oh, sorry. Trench-coated defectives, that is, detectives, and more. Through it all, a guy's got to do what a guy's got to do. That means performing a tune array that includes the title song, City by Night, Could I Fall in Love, Long-Legged Girl, and There's So Much World to See. Trouble was never this cool and this much fun. I love it. Trouble has been a lot more fun. <laughs> Now, see, uh, Double Trouble is one of those movies where, in my opinion, uh, it depends on when you saw it first. Because I saw this thing as a kid, and as a kid, I laughed my hat my head off, uh, which is why I, I don't have a brain anymore. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I saw this as a kid, and so I don't necessarily I I don't necessarily go back there, but I still view it the same way as I did as yeah. a kid when you Jamie, saw it a little later. Jamie has fond memories of this. Famously, like this is the one that when it came out on DVD, I tried to watch it. I got about 45 minutes of the way in and I said, I, I can't take this. <laughs> like this is terrible. <laughs> and so I turned it off and I never attempted to watch it again <laughs> until we started the show and I needed to watch all of Elvis's movies. Yeah, for your grading system. For a grading. And so I was like, okay, 
Let's try this again. Surely it's not as bad as I remember. Oh, boy. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is, I think, I think by far, this is Elvis's worst movie. See, that's fascinating because yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I, 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 if I had the choice between this and not, because now I enjoy all of them, but if I had choice between watching this and like Frankie and Johnny, oh, I, I'd pick this. I'll take Frankie and Johnny 10 times out of 10 over this. <laughs> I will take Harem Scarum 10 times out of 10 over this. I will take Kissing Cousin 11 times out of 10 over this. <laughs> like, yeah, I just, I don't know. There's just, I, Elvis seems bored, and I do too when I watch this film. <laughs> See, to me, it's just it's it's silly humor. It's like it's like Looney. T it's kind of like Tickle Me. Uh, the um, it just minus Jocelyn Lane, which is I know for you. It's silly humor when all the jokes are read like this. <laughs> <laughs> Jail. <No. laughs> but uh, you know. Uh, I think like I, I love I love the humor in it. Uh, it's just it reads like a cartoon, especially with you know the two guys, the two jewel thieves, and everything. Now, I, I saw this well before I saw any Beatles films, and as you'd said, this it, it is inspired. It takes some cues from Help. It does, yeah. And uh, you know, being set in merry old London, which I think is just it's a stupid place to put an Elvis movie. I'm sorry. Like, okay, I, I would love for Elvis. There to went half our fan base, man. <laughs> No, I think Elvis would have been phenomenal touring in London. Right. As an Elvis movie, that's a, it's almost like set in an Elvis movie in Detroit or something. You know? Like, we got a little bit in Chicago in Girl Happy. Sure. But they got out of that shit in the first five minutes. <laughs> you know? And they got down to Fort Lauderdale. I'm just saying, like, rainy, dreary, inner, you know, big city. Yeah. Not an ideal site for an Elvis movie. I don't know. I, I think uh, I think there's a lot. Like there might have been ways to do this that would keep you more interested. Oh, certainly. <laughs> but here's the thing: I understand that that's not entirely possible because to do that, you would have to have Elvis at a point in his career when he was <laughs> less questioning his life choices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. You can this see him is... mentally counting the number of movies in his contract with every scene in this film. <laughs> well, now I will, I will say this is right around the same time as uh, how great thou art and all of that kind of thing. And that's just and, baffling. And and just like and so you can definitely you know as an adult you can certainly you can see the separation and everything. But honestly, if you're just watching to have a good time, honestly, I had fun with it. I, I and I still did. I was, you know he's he he was rolling his eyes as we were watching, and I was still laughing. I was along. in pain, and Jamie was over here cackling at it. And I, I love it. I'm glad Jamie can enjoy the movie. I'm glad for anybody who enjoys Double Trouble. <laughs> In uh, you know, to be honest, I'm gonna buy a copy of this myself <laughs> just because it's Elvis on Blu-ray. Yeah, I probably won't watch it all that often. Right, you know, but I gotta have just, it. Yeah, I gotta have it just yeah. in case something from Double Trouble becomes suddenly very important, and I need to go searching for, you know, like something that he was wearing or like, right. you know, when it comes to checking authenticity of stuff, you need all the sources you can yep. get, and better resolution is always good. Now, uh. This has the original theatrical trailer as special features, and also two Tom and Jerry cartoons, and everybody, myself kind of included, was like, what? It has the Tom and Jerry cartoons, Rock and Rodent, and Surfboard Cat, B-O-R-E-D. Wow. Uh, Surfboard Cat probably describes Elvis uh, making this film, but like I said, I still had fun. Now, why would they have included two Tom and Jerry cartoons with this movie. Yes. Uh, Warner has a tendency when they do archive releases like yeah. this, they like to create a little historical context and uh, they'll give you basically, basically samples of stuff that played with the film somewhere. Okay. Like if it's a film from the forties when they used to do newsreels, a couple of cartoons, trailers, all that, they'll put the whole shebang on there and you can actually watch it as if you're going into the theater, it'll play one right after the other, right after the other. Then you oh, get to the movie. Oh, okay. This is inspired by that. Both of these cartoons ran with Double Trouble at some U.S. screenings. Okay. And so you can watch the cartoons, which would be would have been played then. They didn't really do newsreels as much in 67. Right. But um, it gives you a little idea of what it would have been like had you gone to the theater to see it. 
Cool. Okay. So now you know. Now you know why Tom and Jerry cartoons are because I was confused about that too. So that's that's cool. So the uh, that's that's why it's nice to have a film historian. <laughs> uh, in Somebody the mix. who buys lots of Warner discs. <laughs> exactly. So very cool. Anyway. This is our look at the Blu-ray of Double Trouble. Um, you know, whether the movie is for you or not, the visual quality is excellent. Easy come, easy go. Ten times a t- out of ten over Double Trouble. <laughs> oh, man. This, that's, that, I, I like Easy Come, That's easy just being go. hurtful. I'm not, I'm not even going to apologize for it. I think Easy Come, Easy Go is a fun movie. I enjoy Easy Come, Easy Go. Baz Luhrmann agrees with me. Yeah, but I enjoy this, too. So the... Uh, uh, there's no accounting for my taste, but anyway, uh, but honestly, picture quality is good. Uh, sounds good. Um, yeah, it's a solid, it's a solid release. Even if the movie itself is uh, not for everybody, it's a fine release. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and especially if you can grab it on sale, always cool. So anyway, I'm Jamie and I'm John, and this is the EAP society quick take Tuesday. So the Elvis archival preservation society's whole point is to make sure that Elvis history is not lost to history and information about releases and stories and history and all that kind of stuff from when Elvis was alive all the way up until today are preserved for current generations and future generations, no matter what your budget is, because Elvis liked for his art to be accessible to people of all walks of life. And we like to pay that forward as best we can. In the spirit of that, the EAP Society is not just a YouTube channel. This is a people-powered movement. That means you. And you can help us by liking, sharing, commenting on the video, subscribing to the channel if you've not already. And it helps us by getting us out there in the algorithm so more people see us. And it could help you because when we hit 20,000 subscribers, we're going to give away this item that personally belonged to Elvis Presley. This letter opener he had from 1956 until 1973. So I had it for quite a long time. And when we hit 20,000 subscribers, subscribers, we are going to have a drawing and a random drawing. You could win this letter opener. Elvis owned this. You might be next, but only if you're a subscriber. So subscribe today. Uh, we do live events. Check out the banner below. You can uh, see where we're going to be. EAPsociety.com for the information on that. We really appreciate that. Our weekend events are a fun-filled Elvis weekend, three days or so. And the prices don't break the bank, which is always good. That's the thing that Elvis was like. We like to do that as well. And even better, the proceeds go to helping the EAP Society with Elvis history and preserving Elvis history. If you want to get in on the ground floor of this movement, become a member of the EAP Society. Go to EAPsociety.com and click on Become a Member. Uh, You can see all of the cool perks that paid member tiers get in the banner below. Uh, We really appreciate all of our members. Thank you so much to all of our members, especially a big shout out to our very own Colonel, Colonel Miles Foreman. Thank you, Colonel. Appreciate you very much. All right. We put out content on Tuesday with our Quick Take Tuesday and, of course, our main channel content on Friday. So until the next video, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And always, TCB. TCB. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me.